Hi guys, welcome to Willoughby. Today we're going to do an episode on weed tea. Um, basically, we're going to be taking all the weeds from the yard and um, making a compost tea out of it. Uh, it's really simple. I'll show you how we do it. Just grab like a five gallon pail, like these weeds for example. We're just going to pull them out of the ground, put them in there. Um, we've got some extra purslane here. What was happening here, the whole uh, theory behind us, the weeds pull the minerals, the nutrients, everything from, from underneath the ground, and um, they compete with the other plants that are in the garden. That's why you really don't want weeds in your garden. But all those nutrients and minerals that they've pull, pulled from underneath the ground, especially ones with long tap roots, those minerals are still in the plant. So what we're going to do, we're going to put them in this bucket here, let them ferment anaerobically for a couple weeks, fill it halfway, fill it with water, and then we'll let it stay. We'll move it around a little bit and uh, leach out all those minerals and use it as a compost tea. All right, so what I was thinking, I had uh, quite a few weeds in my garden that need to be pulled out. Just go around pulling them out. I noticed my uh, moringa tree is yellowing a little bit, so I'm gonna take some of these leaves off here, moringa. Every time you chop it down, it gets more vigorous growth. So we're just gonna take some of these yellow branches here. This is full of uh, nutrients. One of the best plants to have. And these leaves are awesome. Uh, it's also good as a chop and drop plant. They also make a lot of, um, it's a superfood, so they make powders out of it. You put it in your smoothies. You now we throw it right in our salads. We take a lot of these and every night to put it in our salads. But this would be excellent for our, our wheat tea. All right, so we're just going to go around the, the garden and pull out some weeds. I like these weeds, that those tenacious ones, um, the ones that have the long tap roots. They go really down. They pull up the nutrients. Dandelion, though I like to eat dandelion myself, to find some around here, I'll throw it in there. See, like these ones with the long roots, those are perfect grasses, all this stuff is going to make an excellent compost. So that's we're recycling, we're giving back, right back to the earth. Alright, so this is basically the whole operation. We'll do this first one. What I like to do is I have, because my yard is so big, I'll put the uh, buckets all around. A couple here, a couple there, because it does get stinky. Um, you know, you, you have to mix it, keep mixing it. It's going to get really smelly. But after a couple weeks, it'll settle down. But I don't like lugging that stuff around. It gets on you. It smells. It's not good. So I'd rather have it close to where I'm going to do my watering, um, fertilize each one of these plants. This part of the yard, actually, because this uh, avocado tree drops a lot of leaves. Um, you don't get that many weeds. The leaves cover it. What I should do is rake it up and throw it in my compost pile. Because I do need some more source of carbon. Because like I said, I have a lot of uh, kitchen scraps, which are the, the nitrogen. So you got to mix it. Just stop there. Hmm? That's about it. So, it's about, I like to fill it up halfway. I've seen some other people fill it all the way up, but it becomes such a pain to, mo to move it to mix it up. Um, it comes really concentrated as well. I like to leave mine here in South Florida in July. It's very hot. Probably take about a week, 10 days. Most people suggest putting it for two weeks, but it's so hot here. Um, I seem to think that. The heat makes it speed up, it speeds up the process. Now we're just going to get some water. Ideally, I'd like to use rainwater because every uh, municipality, um, they add chlorine, they add chemicals. Here in Boca Raton, where I'm located, they don't add fluoride, thank God, but there is chlorine. Um, so if you had rainwater, that would be the best thing to use because this is biological. Um, the chlorine will kill some of the, the beneficials that we're looking to get out of there. But since I don't have any rainwater on hand at the moment, we're just going to fill it up with the uh, normal hose. Alright, this is 
is it. There's no uh, no magic here, no secrets. This is uh, basically nature giving back. Excellent fertilizer. So we'll just uh, fill this up with water. We'll cover it. Every day I'll come out and stir it. Uh, probably once in the morning when I get home from work. In the evening, twice a day, it's probably good to even better for it. Get some of that oxygen on the bottom of the bacteria needs to uh, break down those weeds and take out all that minerals and the good beneficials that we want to get out of here. And we'll come back in about a week. And this will be ready to uh, dilute it. Again, like I said, it's going to be super concentrated. Um, I've read different things. People say 10 to 1. Um, I'd, I'd like to use half and half. Um, my plants, they can handle it. Some of them, they say they get burnt, but um, I, that's not been my experience. So, and I'm going to do a lot of these buckets all around. So I'll dilute it half and half. Sometimes I'll even uh, take it out at seven days and then uh, use that water and refill it with water and reuse it, almost like, you know, reusing a tea bag. So you're going to get everything out of there. You're going to try to leach all the minerals, all the good stuff out of there. All right, cover it up, and that's that. Let me go grab a cover real quick. Planted another banana that I had uh, a pup that was sitting up there. One of, one of those Costa Rican, one of those red bananas. Can't wait for that one to come back up. Did a lot of uh, pruning and cleaning this weekend. Everything's in full bloom. Acerolas. Check this out, guys. Acerolas, this was transplanted not too long ago. It was up back in that corner. It wasn't doing anything for like a good couple years. I had it over there, but the mango tree, when it was full bloom, didn't let it get enough sun. But now it's been here. I'm um, very recent and it's just starting to fruit on it. I'm very happy with that. Also, I noticed over here, I have another loofah that sprang out of somewhere. Look at this, guys. There's one right here. There's a loofah right there. This thing's going crazy. There's a lot of grapes up in here, too, as well. This is my other, my main acerola. Um, the birds have been having a field day with it. You can notice all the ones that are on the floor, the birds just knocking off. Um, you know what, but you got to give back to them as well. So we're going to have so much production in here, I don't mind sharing. All right, let's go cover that up. I noticed today as well, I have another banana thing. It's starting to go one over here, this one here, third one here. And while I was sitting over here taking some sun, I noticed another one up there. There's four over there. I mean, normally you're not supposed to have so many bananas clustered around. I should have thinned this out, but uh, it's doing its thing. There's a lot. Of, I don't even know how many's in here. Four, let's see. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It's about at least fifteen. Um, supposed to keep four. They say it's supposed to be four. It's supposed to be like the, the grandmother. The mother, the daughter, and the granddaughter. That's what, how they name these things. But um, this thing is doing all right. I'm not too worried about it. It is kind of a pain in the butt to clean it out. I mean, the weeds getting in between there and stuff. I'm um, just letting this do its thing. I'm chopping, chopping the leaves. And we'll see how it goes. So far, so good. All right, so that's it. We just cover this. And I'll be out here in the morning, in the afternoon, give it a stir, another week. You'll, I, I can tell by the smell when it's ready, basically. It's going to, the first three or four days, it's going to get really strong. And towards the end, it'll taper out. And then we'll spread it around on all the ones that are fruiting. I think they need the extra shot in the arm. All right. So I got my, I don't know if you guys saw this one here before. This is a vanilla bean orchid. It's growing good. I bought this online. It wasn't cheap. It was very, very small. came in the mail. Um, had it up on my transplanting station there for a while. Finally got to put it in the ground. I'm hoping that it's going to some connect itself to this mango tree. If this mango doesn't produce anymore, at least it'll be able to hold the, the vanilla orchid. And as well, the monsteria plant over here. 
which is another fruiting plant. It's a rainforest plant. It has a fruit that's uh, almost like a long banana. It tastes like a banana and pineapple mix. I haven't seen any fruit on it yet, but hopefully once we start getting some uh, fertilizer on it, it'll give it a, a boost that it needs to, to grow. I moved as well this weekend my olive trees that were over there underneath the uh, my neighbor's got a big tree over there. I don't know what it is. It's not a fruiting tree. It's just a big tree that keeps dropping branches and making a lot of shade. And that side of the yard over there is very wet. Um, it's where most of the water from the house runs off and stuff. And these things are from the Mediterranean. Olive trees grow in Italy. They grow in Greece. They grow in Spain on arid, you know, um, places that don't have a lot of water. So I moved them over here. I put the couple of days because it was in there for two days. Didn't have any shock when I moved it at all. I dug a hole really deep. The hole was real deep. Uh, made sure the soil over here is really good. Put plenty of uh, compost that I had around here in the hole with it. These are the three olives I just moved. And I also put in, decided to put my caper bush here as well because this part of the yard basically gets almost zilch in water. So that's what it needs. It likes to drain. I put some rocks, some of these pebbles underneath that one in the hole to make sure it drains well because it does not like soggy feet. Right. The, uh, I if I showed you guys before my mushroom patch over here. This originally was for ginger. I was uh, planting ginger in here. This gate's up here for the dog because the dog goes nuts. My neighbor has a dog and he jumps on the fence and he's tearing up everything so I just put up this as a barrier for the animal. But uh, this originally was for ginger. I had thought I took everything out, but I see the ginger's starting to pop back up. These stalks here are ginger. Um, another one here. Another one here. This is uh, King Strafaria. I bought some spawn online, and I put it down in there with um, some um, sawdust that I had. Put a cover down there, put lots of wood chips on top of it. Hopefully we'll see. I know it takes a long time. We'll see if anything comes of it. But meanwhile, the ginger's having fun in there. All right. This is stevia. It's another one. This is a natural sweetener. Uh, I haven't uh, tried it yet myself, but it's grown around here in, in the yard in various places. Oh, I wanted to show you guys that all those uh, pumpkins and zucchinis that we, that we put in, they had come up right away. You can see them here, but something, one of these doggone bugs in there is eating it. You know, when they start blooming like this, those young leaves, they're irresistible for those uh, late night um, bugs. They like to chomp on everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replant this, this mound. Carrots doing all right. I'm going to replant the mound and put these plastic collars that I got. They're basically just uh, deli containers, 32 ounce deli containers that I cut the bottom off and put it around there and it seems to do the job. See, this is the only one that survived. Put the collar on it. And I'm going to re redo it. Gotta get it in there. Get my... put this one in here as well. And uh, maybe this one is going to make it grow another leaf. But we did plant quite a few of them here. You can see that all of them, just about all of them, got eaten up. Over here, over here, over here. But, you know, that's the name of the game. We live and learn. So we'll do that again. I'm going to get those in there. Oh, I wanted to show you guys as well the cashews that we planted. Um, one out of the two has come up. I thought it would be waterlogged, but uh, finally broke through. And uh, it's looking good. Come on, take a walk. I'll show you. Watch your head there. Trimmed up my jujube. It was out of control. This tree is great. It's going to bloom again. I cut it back pretty hard. I mean, things go nuts. Um, it's full of thorns. Super careful with this one here. Okay, here it is. It's that cashew that we planted on the 18th. Came up. This other one here was still waiting for it. It's still pretty wet. I'm not sure if it's going to come up or not, but I'm happy that it got 50%. One out of two ain't bad. And I got some marigolds from Lowe's. I always shop the 50 cent 
10 bucks for this, but I, you know, it's just all dried out. All I needed was a little water. And it's going to be my companion planting for my tomato seeds that we planted the other day that we started as seedlings. Um, let me check up on them. And this marigolds and tomatoes go together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. You know, they like each other. One last thing I wanted to show you guys before we finish this episode. My compost pile is doing pretty good. Um, I think it's, it's getting a lot of water on it, which it needs. I've, found, I've been raking up like banana leaves and stuff like that, shredding them, using it for my carbon-based um, herbs. Loofahs are going wild. Look at the one behind there. It's even longer than the one in the front of it. That thing's a good 18 inches at least, I'd say. There's a couple more on there. These things are going nuts. There's another one over here. It just started. I think uh, next year I might put cucumbers over here on this on this uh, trough. Yeah. Oh, can't get to it. Yeah. See, it's connected to each other. Watch the peppers there. All right, and that's about it, guys. All right, guys. So there you have it. It's another episode, and as always, will it be? Homegrown, fresh, organic, or will it be GMO, insecticides, suicides? Remember, two green thumbs up. Please subscribe. See you guys later. Boss of the boss of the boss of the boss. Of the boss of the boss of the boss of the boss. Of the boss of the boss of the boss of the boss. Let's go. Let's start, right?